Hello, 3D Experience World. Uh, here again, uh, I am with an uh, amazing guest, Tony Fadel. Remember last year, uh, we had a discussion with uh, Jim Capobianco from uh, Disney Pixar, talking about its uh, great animation and uh, on how 3D is applied to, uh, to this world. Uh, so I'm very glad to, uh, to have with me uh, Tony. Um, no need to introduce Tony. Uh, I guess everyone uh, knows very well. Uh, but as the record, uh, inventor of the iPod, co-inventor of the uh, iPhone, working with Apple, um, obviously uh, on Nest, founding Nest, uh, and now uh, doing a venture with a Future Shape. So um, a, 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 an amazing story uh, that I'm sure will inspire our audience, uh, designers, engineers, um, analysts, entrepreneurs, makers. So uh, we are together to uh, share uh, during 45 minutes your, uh, your story to uh, uh, obviously inspire people. And uh, maybe uh, back in the old days, uh, probably most of uh, you have seen this, uh, this uh, documentary on Amazon Prime about General Magic. And uh, I found by preparing this, uh, this session with you, Tony, some very old pictures of you on, uh, on all of your colleagues. <laughs> and, uh, you used to have some hair here. I used to have some hair here. <laughs> and uh, working as a, as a startup with uh, General Magic, what was the, uh, the, the big challenges you had uh, in front of you? First, I want to just say thanks to you, Frederick, and thanks to the audience out there for, you know, tuning in and, and watching this, you know, this, this, this uh, group of people, our creators, our builders, and actually will be creating the next generation's, uh, you know, products and services that, and processes and manufacturing and everything that our whole world will use. Um, and that's what this is all about. So it's really uh, great to be here. I'm honored to be here and to talk to like-minded creators who want to just change the world for the better. So that's so. First, saying that, uh, let's move on to your question. So, uh, exactly, rephrase your question. Just so I uh, know. It was about the old days at uh, General Magic. You were a, a, a very small startup at that time, trying to work with big guys. You know, like uh, ATT or. Motorola, and uh, it was very challenging at that time. Yeah, it was, it was incredibly challenging. You know, that was 30 years ago. It was 30 years ago that uh, I joined General Magic, and that was about a year, year and a half after it started. And that company um, was, was uh, uh, started by the um, original Mac team. So Andy Hertzfeld and uh, Bill Atkinson and others, along with Mark Peratt. And so there's actually, as you said, the documentary that's all about it. But back then, you know, we didn't have any of the tools. We didn't have any of the technologies um, for what was to become the I, uh, iPhone just 15, 17 years later. We were working really hard at building a smartphone um, back in the day. But we, we didn't have the Internet even. We had dial-up phone lines. We didn't, there wasn't wireless data. There was hardly even, there was almost no analog uh, wireless data either. So it's really interesting to, you know, be able to go back to where it all started and how dramatic a failure was, uh, was General Magic. But we were able to, you know, have the right ideas um, back then. We just didn't have the right technologies and the right, you know, overall product um, vision at that time. So just, uh, we were... We were, we, were, we were trying to change the world just too early. But eventually, many of us on that team went forward and, and created uh, the iPhone. And then from that, also uh, Android. So it was all happening right there in that, um, in, in that little team in, uh, in, in Sunnyvale, uh, California. So time is the essence in the innovation. And the, the lessons learned, it's, you, need, you need to be at the right time. Sometimes when it's too early, it's... Uh... But you are learning, learning a lot to move forward. Again, yeah, it's two things on timing. One is making sure you have the technology, right? That's like, okay, we can't, you know, people are still been working on VR and AR and, and those things for many years, right? It's the technology really there for that. I started working on VR in 1989. Yeah, 1989, that's the right date. That's how old I am, but that's how long VR has been around, right? And we're starting to see the promises of VR, but it took a long time to get to that point. Um, with General Magic, we didn't have the technology, 
just like we didn't have the right stuff for VR back then. But more importantly, you also have to worry about the timing for the customer adoption. In other words, are you truly um, meeting needs that people understand that they have? Do they feel the pain of what you're trying to fix for them? Back then, you know, in the early 90s, we were ta- at General Metric, we were talking about email. Most people didn't even have an email account. They didn't even have a corporate network at their, 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 sure. um, at their business. They didn't have the internet or access to inter- information anywhere. They, you know, we were talking about uh, buying travel on a device, downloading games and, and, and various merchandise like e-tailing. So all of that stuff we were solving, trying to solve for in, in the early 90s, but no one had these problems, right? It wasn't until after they got internet and Wi-Fi and, and uh, e-tailing and, and all of these things to finally say we're going to, and email for that matter, we're going to solve those things in a, um, in a handheld device, you know, in 2007. So timing is not just about the technology. It's also about the, you know, where society is at. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's not just the geeks. So it's a, it's well That's worth right. to watch the movie for anyone who's creating to see, what, <laughs> to the see all the behind the scenes. <laughs> and then you join Apple, you, you made the iPod, um, an amazing story uh, as well. And uh, uh, sharing some pictures there where you are with uh, Steve Jobs and uh, obviously uh, everyone's probably uh, having the question on uh, you are uh, the lucky guy working with, uh, with him. Uh, what could you give as a takeaway feedbacks of this uh, of these times on working relationship with uh, with Steve Jobs and uh... sure well let's see you know there's lots of things to talk about um, <laughs> maybe a lot a lot of things because you know it was ten years um, and also my wife my wife who I met at Apple worked for him for ten years as well so lots of stories as you could imagine but ones for this audience you know uh, I, I'll have to share as you you know. Apple wasn't in a great space when I first uh, went to Apple. Uh, it was not the three trillion dollar valued company, not this you know global powerhouse. Back then, people were saying we should just take the company, uh, um, close it, and bring put the money back into shareholders' hands and let Apple go you know go away. Uh, it didn't have a reason for existing. So that was a that was a very different time. With Steve's vision and Steve's efforts um, and focus, uh, he gave me and the team the environment to go off and create the iPod and and uh, allow the other team, the team working on iTunes, to also you know dream big. And we put the two together uh, to to really affect Apple. Um, and you know it was the beginning of the trajectory where Apple is today. Now it was many many years later, but uh, you had to get started somewhere. And you know. Apple was a, at that time was only worth about four billion dollars or so, and today it's you know three trillion. So um, these things take time, but if you do it right, step by step, you know <laughs> you can you can uh, you you can get there. But it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of people to make that happen. It wasn't just me; it was a whole team. But Steve's involvement really was making sure that we would have the environment. Um, he held us to high standards to make sure that we were following through on stuff. Um, he would get into the design details. Why of this? Why of that? Why not this? Uh, but most importantly, I think it was about no, saying no to things um, so that you could really focus on the things that mattered. So for Steve and that I learned from, we could do anything, but what was the right thing to do? And even if there was something that was right to do, but it wasn't needed to be done right now, don't worry about it. We'll get around to it. You know, we, you know, 18 generations of the iPod later and how many generations of the iPhone. It was get those first few things done right and then build upon it. You know, we don't engineer the world and in our one shot and we're done and we can all go on vacation. It's a, an, an iterative process. And so um, saying no um, or, or saying no, not now, uh, we'll yeah. do it in the future. That's really again, again, uh, his strength. Yeah, it's 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 a matter of time, right? Yeah. Exactly. And, 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 and guess what? Uh, we see the, the, the 15th year anniversary of the iPhone and still working, you see? 
<laughs> yeah. This is the first. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. You know, it was 20 years of iPod. You know, anniversary was last fall and now it's 15 years. It's like, it's amazing that it goes by that fast. Um, um, but it does. And uh, it's amazing where it started and where it's now. You know, the teams at Apple have taken and all the developers around it have taken it. And, you know, your tools are supporting it. And those tools are building all the things that are, you know, working on it. Uh, it's really wonderful. You know, we, we use SolidWorks for a lot of the designs uh, at Apple. And so uh, it was a key tool for, for, for us to be able to create. So I'm very happy to see that it's still, uh, still alive, still working. My screen is a bit broken, but uh, uh, it long lasts. So uh, congratulations. <laughs> and to, to... <laughs> On then, yeah, uh, fix you, it up. Uh, it might be worth a lot of money there on the on the web, on uh, eBay. It's what I saw on eBay. Yeah, the price are getting very high. <laughs> yes, they are for iPods too. So uh, uh, I gotta I gotta make sure I keep all my 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 uh, memorabilia <laughs> locked up in a safe. You know. <laughs> And then you created Nest, and uh, I'm showing the, this photo to the audience. I don't know if you remember, Tony, it was in Paris at Le Web. Uh, that was Le Web, Le Web, way back when. Yeah. You were with Loïc and uh, on Xavier, and I was uh, at the front row at, at this period of time. In, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, you were launching uh, the new thermostat, this Internet of Things. It was really at the beginning of the Internet of Things uh, in Europe. And... Uh, uh, and people were impressed and uh, uh, looking at this and looking at others, by the way, especially in the um, well-being sector. I don't know if you remember Withings, you know, uh, showing their uh, yeah, connected scale. Yeah, absolutely. Totally know them. It was I use a Withings scale every day. Uh, it doesn't yeah. always tell me what I want it to tell me, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> so Eric is also a friend of mine and they are also using SolidWorks. And, uh, and at that time, it was in 2012. Uh, it was really a revolution in the in, in the product by itself. You know, we are coming from a, a mechanical product to a, um, a smart object connected, and uh, it's changing a lot of things. And uh, you, as a designer, first uh, we could see on, on on my screen that the design is so neat. You know, uh, it's it's an amazing simple design, very sophisticated. Uh, it's it's impressive. Uh, what are your takeaways, not on the product by itself, but on the this revolution of the Internet of Things is uh, bringing to a, a mechanical product? Back then, we were the first uh, of now what today, you know, I can't believe, you know, you, we talked about the iPhone 15 years ago. This is already over 10 years old. It's amazing, yeah. you know, bam, bam, bam. Like That's true. Just, you know, things are Time is running away. fast. Right. And so 10 years ago, this was the beginning of, of all those devices. Now we have devices all around you and your, 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 you know, your audience and all, the, uh, all your um, users are all building all of those devices with it. But, you know, what was, what's so great about what we can do now is we can bring that full experience um, of incredible design, software, hardware, um, uh, uh, ex uh, customer experience. Um, both either it's a consumer or for businesses to everybody. And because of the power of the smartphone, not just because of the apps on a smartphone, but because of all the parts, all the ICs, the screens, all of the, the wireless, we have now been able to put that technology everywhere. And it has been cost reduced so much that we can put these these, these little brains and these little wireless networks and, and screens into everything. Not that we should necessarily, but we can. And we're now seeing a proliferation of those things throughout the world. And it's really, uh, it's really uh, humbling to see, um, to see that happening and to, you know, building off of that, that smartphone vision um, and the, the connectivity platform that's there. So uh, I can only, you know, now we have bicycles, right? And we have all the mobility yeah. Um, urban mobility things like as we see around here in Paris, all of the, the transformation of the city just over the last five, seven years, um, which we can all go to, you know, we can go point back to um, uh, the, the smartphone uh, just 15 years ago. So I'm ter terribly, terribly excited about what's to come for all of these different devices um, and where we're, where we're headed. 
That said, we have to be really cognizant of the environment and making sure that we're building things that uh, uh, help us with the planet and living yeah. with the planet, not just living on it and trampling it as we have over the last 150 years, but how can we be more integrated in helping us with better efficiency, making sure we're, we have less waste, all of these kinds of things. And that's what is so wonderful, not just because we can make things and make these incredible objects, but to be able to make them in a way that will allow us to live on this planet in harmony with the earth and allow us to understand our, our various things that we use, our resources we use from the earth and help us you know, create our, have a, better, have a better lifestyle while you know, not being wasteful. And so um, um, that's, that's really important to me. Yeah, because in a way, uh, especially about the thermostat by itself, uh, it's saving a lot uh, because obviously uh, all your uh, heater systems is, you know, uh, optimized. Uh, but all those uh, devices are having a battery inside. And uh, uh, if you extend, as you said, uh, uh, around us, most of them, you know, need uh, energy to, uh, to, uh, to work. And it was right. not the case in the past. Huh? The scale, for instance, from breathing in the past, you don't need any batteries. You know? um, so we need to find also ways to, uh, to optimize. And if, like, um, in, in our 3D experience lab, you know, we are, as you know, uh, you visited us, uh, it was three or four Absolutely. years ago in Paris, you remember, <laughs> before COVID. Uh, we accelerate disruptive innovations and we are I'm trying to, to identify startups that will help bringing those IoTs uh, autonomous in energy. For instance, uh, Dracula technology, uh, as you can see on this uh, screen, they are uh, uh, enabling uh, to print uh, to print uh, layers that will capture energy not only from the sun but also from the light uh, to produce mm -hmm. uh, electricity directly on the on the on the product. Uh, we also accelerate another startup, but here more for micro energy. BFC. Uh, here it's about paper and enzymes. So um, a no biological impact. battery. It's a biological battery, exactly. No impact on the environment, and uh, it will probably help. You know, all those uh, smart devices, uh, not asking a lot in terms of energy to be uh, autonomous and uh, making less uh, less impact. But you, you're right. Uh, going uh, into uh, sustainability. Uh, there are a lot of things to, to, to do. Uh, I like this ad because most, most of the corporates are now conscious about the impact uh, and they need to do uh, uh, and to upgrade the, um, their strategy uh, in terms of engineering production in respect to the environment. But with this ad, it's really you know, more inclusive, you know, not only the, the, the engineer, but you know, also the manufacturing process up to the consumer needs to uh, to be conscious mm -hmm. on, the, on, the, on the keys here, I think. Yeah, it's the full no life cycle. Less, it's the full life cycle. You know, how do you acquire, how do you, how do you recycle? It's really important that we as designers all think about not just what we put in it, but how what we put in it is going to be, uh, is going to be reused over time. We can't just keep wasting things and thinking we're going to use virgin materials, you know. Um, as you say, you have right here on the screen, electronics, battery, touch, and sound, but we have the plastics, we have all the other metals, we have so many other things that are, you know, not just rare earths, but all kinds of other commodities that are inside of these products that need to um, be thoughtfully designed and, uh, and, and the materials thoughtfully picked. So I'm looking forward to the next generation of your tools to help people make intelligent decisions, help designers make intelligent decisions as they go off and build with, um, with uh, SolidWorks or any of the 3D systems products. That's true. We are building some new solutions to help designers because from what I understand, about 80% of the impact of a product uh, is, uh, is uh, to be taken into account at the engineering phase. And, uh, and the problem today is people don't know. Uh, so uh, I think globally, people now are conscious about the issue. Uh, corporate, but also up to, you know, uh, individuals. Uh, and uh, as you can see on, on the screen, we are now delivering new solutions for the engineer to understand the different options, uh, to understand the impact, uh, to um, 
rely on, uh, on sustainability databases uh, in order to make the right choice mm -hmm. and to have alternatives and trade-off so that they can decide the, the, the best way. So right, and I think, I think it's imperative. I think it's imperative it is, as a designer to really learn about these new materials, just like you learn about new processes or technologies, you need to learn about the materials, especially from an eco-friendly perspective, both at the beginning of life as, as well as the end of life, because we are the ones creating all of this stuff. Yeah. You get to yeah. choose. And what you need to do is educate yourself so you choose properly. But then it doesn't just go and stop with you. It's when you know operations and manufacturers say, oh, we can't use that because X, Y, and Z or blah, blah. You know, like we have to just say, we can't just do the same things we've always been doing. We all need to be part of this, but it starts with design. If operations, because operations is going to come to you with a new type of material saying, use this one that's better for the planet. It starts with us. You know, just like you want to be innovative with the things you build, be innovative with the, you know, the environment and what you choose um, for what you're building and then push it through to sales and marketing, push it through to operations and be real steadfast in saying we need to help the planet and I'm not going to design things that are going to hurt the planet anymore. We now have alternatives. It's time to choose wisely. Yes, it might be slightly more expensive or no, we don't have as much uh, volume of that product and they need to make more capacity. Well, guess what? We're not going to get there if we don't all push, if we don't all try and, and demand that it was changing. Because other than that, who else is going to make the change? You know, it's yeah. us doing these jobs day in and day out, making these smart decisions. We're the ones who have to be the, the thought leaders here. And hopefully a lot of other people will join in that. But do not go to de designing devices that you know are going to impact the, the world in the, in the wrong way for your children, your grandchildren. Do the right thing. Yeah, uh, definitely. It's uh, what we try to, 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 to bring to the, to the table, you know. As you know, during the, the Internet of Things transition, you know, we help, you know, uh, SolidWorks users to go from a pure mechanical product to also the system approach, simulation. So they, they found, uh, you know, a lot of, other apps you know around now coming to the 3d experience platform they have access to uh, apps that will help them in their uh, sustainability uh, engineering eco design on, on trade-off decisions for uh, for living you know uh, it's wonderful to see this just like we do you know we do fmea we do these different types of simulations this is another yeah. type of simulation and i only look forward to seeing your tools getting smarter and smarter over the years um to help us make better designs um that that don't hurt the planet so uh it's really wonderful to see the guys are integrating these things in your tools and i can only imagine where they're going to be in just five years from now even 10 years from now yeah now you're running a venture, right, uh, Tony? Uh, future uh, shapes. Yes, future from, shapes from Paris, by the way. Huh? You are uh, you uh, you're based in Paris now. You know, we have a yeah, we have a team here in Paris, and we have a team um, in San Francisco. So between that, why, why we... yeah. Go ahead. Why have you decided to to uh, to live in Paris now? Pourquoi pas? No, seriously. <laughs> uh, you know, seriously, the reason for doing it is because. There, after being in Silicon Valley for 30 years, you know, you get to go through the same things and you see the same people and you whatever. And the only way to really get out um, and learn more and, and be able to help more is to see different, um, you know, different societies and how they do things. I've learned a lot of being here in France. I've learned a lot about election systems. I've learned a lot about media. I've learned a lot of things. You know, the America <laughs> is not the greatest country in the world I you know I'm going to be the I'm a citizen of the U.S. but I will be the first one to tell you it's not the greatest country in the world like they they claim it to be you know I've seen amazing things here throughout the EU I've seen amazing things in India and Southeast Asia and all around and we need to all learn about those things because you know there's smart people everywhere in the world and you got to get out there and learn about the needs and see the needs in fact Nest would have been, wouldn't have happened if I didn't go and travel the world with our family back in 2009 and actually be here in Paris um, and learn about the, the, the problems with thermostats all around and pen up the, you know, the, the, the business plan and do the initial design for Nest right here in Paris. So, 
you know, you got to get out of your day to day, learn about those other things and get um, and, and figure out new solutions to pro problems or maybe people have solved the problem in other places of the world. Don't just think you're the only smart person out there. Go learn. And that's why Paris. Uh, and plus, it's a wonderful city. And I can't believe how much it's changed since we've been here now over six years. And from a greener perspective, from micro mobility perspective, you know, po pollution being reduced, more bike lanes, all of these things are just, to me, I love watching a, a city, you know, continually reinvent itself and understand what the future needs to be, you know, and getting rid of, you know, in, internal combustion engines and stuff like that. It's wonderful to be here and see the change that's happening right here on the ground. Um, and, you know, going back to the US, it frustrates me when I don't see it like I see it here. There is a lot of transformation uh, those those days. You're you're, you're right, and uh, and more to people come. People are now conscious about the, you know, the the way that we know we need to live in uh, in harmony with nature. So uh, uh, people are doing uh, are very conscious about this, and uh, especially in Europe, yes. But it's yeah, yeah, absolutely, the, the and that's why Future Shape. You know, Future Shape is about you know we're investing in companies all around the world, and we have over 200, 250 investments around the world doing things that help the planet help societies and help individuals with their health or what have you. So we're trying to do the right thing to improve and doing the hard things, the atoms plus bits, not, not necessarily always just bits. We're not gonna fix this planet with bits alone. It's gonna take software and hardware, atoms and bits yeah. to solve, solve the problem that we've made for ourselves over the last 150 years because we didn't know any better or we didn't, when we do know better, we didn't take action. Now it's time for all of us to make the industrial revolution, whether you want to call it 2.0 or 4.0, we have to remember that every single thing around us is going to change. The planes we fly on, the cars that we drive, the trucks, the garbage trucks, the, the buildings we live in and how we interact with it, how we build, make materials, how we make things. We're, we're pressing reset on everything and we get to reinvent the entire world because we have to, to save the human species on this planet. And I think it's incredibly rewarding and a, a huge opportunity to do that we got to do it correctly and we got to think about it holistically and so that's what's you know driving me and i'm so optimistic that we're going to be able to invent our way and build our way out of this um and make sure we don't call, make the same mistakes as we did over the last 150 years so um and everyone out yeah. here in this community are the ones to do so and so we hope future shape is bringing some of that to light with the companies we invest in that are doing the real hard things you know, so you, what type of sectors you are in, investing in? Uh, so you mentioned climate tech. We're doing climate. We are doing materials. So we're doing materials. a lot of materials. We're doing mat battery materials. We're making diamonds without mines. We're making leather without cows. We're making you know meat without cows. Uh, uh, we're doing stuff with aquaculture and agriculture, ag tech, aqua tech to help, you know, um, create our food system that's, you know, 35% of our food system is contributing to our, uh, our, our, global, uh, our global climate change issues. So it's all of the things that, and we're doing cancer vaccines, um, we're doing sensors, uh, just there's so many different things that we're trying to do. Um, and the stuff that wasn't necessarily in vogue for investors to invest in. You know, the professional investors yeah. were professional investors, yeah. but we're doing the stuff that no one pays attention to or didn't. And then during COVID, all of a sudden, all these these big venture capitals and everything. Tony, what do you got? What should we be investing in? <laughs> they're finally, you know, for the first like eight, nine years of us doing it, no one really cared. They're like, yeah, they're doing stuff that doesn't matter, yeah. you know. And now all of a sudden it really matters. And and we've been doing it all along. So it's nice to see that the 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 universe is starting to turn yeah. turn I turn our way to to to, to yeah. learn about this stuff and try to try to help because we all we're all in this together. Uh, definitely, I think now there is a big change. When we started the lab five years ago, you remember I shared you know our vision to accelerate startups, deep techs that really brings impact. So this is why we radar the seventeen uh, SDGs from the uh, United Nations to, to to you know to try to 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 bring something and to help. While at that time, you know, remember everyone was talking about AI or uh, um, and, um, the, the, the climate, the environment was not on the agenda at that time. And most of the VCs now are uh, um, conscious about this. And, uh, so yeah. we are 
we are we are together on this uh, on this uh, kind of fight, you know, to uh, to find solutions. Um, because I strongly believe that solutions will come, you know, uh, uh, from innovation as well. You know, we need to connect innovation uh, on on the ecology in a way. You know, and not just we need to find connect. Solutions. We have to embed it in our thinking. Just like we embed yeah. what's the finances of our product, we have to think about what are all the, you know, the yeah. intangibles, you know, what are the externalities that we'll be me causing and starting to price it in, you know, you're, I'm sure if you don't already have, you're going to have, you know, carbon pricing for everything, right? And, you know, what carbon credits or what car, carbon, you know, debits are going to be associated with the product that you build with your tools. So you can not just say what's the bomb, the bill of materials. But what? How does it impact the planet? Because that's going to be a bomb line, a bomb line item over time, and people are going to say we need to optimize for this, just as like we have to for physical stresses or weight or you know density, you know mass density, those kinds of things. All of these things are going to have to be optimized at once. Yeah, definitely optimize and think about the reuse and recycling to uh, to transform. You know. A Something that was using such and such materials into something else, you know, uh, uh, later. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you mentioned uh, atoms and electrons. That's, that's funny uh, because we are working, uh, you know, in, with our lab in the US, in Boston, very closely to, to the MIT with uh, um, the MIT CBA, Center of Bits and Atoms, with uh, mm -hmm. Neil Gershenfeld. <laughs> <And>, uh, <laughs> we, are, we are on the same page, you know, on, the, on, this, uh, on this story, you know. On, uh, he wrote a book, you know, how to make uh, almost everything. I don't know if you read the book, but uh, I think that your title is more profound in a way where you <laughs> make things that worth making, you know. Uh, which right, is, yeah, uh, well. In a way, yeah. uh, we uh, need to uh, produce worth, you know. Uh, I, I fully agree with your title. So I, I, I heard so. that uh, it was, it was a, a, ve a very difficult project uh, writing this book, Tony. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm not a I'm not a writer, right? So build, you know, this is the book I've been working on for the last two years. Uh, and I signed, you know, I signed and committed to it just like three weeks before the before COVID hit, you know, crushed the world, crushed the planet. And so um, it was just something that's been burning inside me to take all of these years of experience um, and things I've learned, deeply learned, not just by doing it, you know, not by just doing and failing, but also through the mentors that I've had. And I said, you know, why not put together all of this stuff in one encyclopedia of mentorship for anybody who's trying to build something on this planet and just see, you know, some of the biggest products and behind the scenes on some of this stuff, but also the rules that were learned. And the rules are not just about creating things it's about creating teams and ideas and vision and it's really about human nature more than it is about any one process or anything we're not getting into electronic uh, design tools we're not getting into any of that stuff it's really about human nature and how bringing people together and building these things uh, really happens as well as building yourself so you can't you can't get on some of these high performing teams unless you've built yourself you can't lead these high performing teams if you don't build yourself and learn along the way. And also, you know, the details of whatever it is you're trying to do, um, um, you know, to, to, to be successful at it. So Bill is really an encapsulation. It's supposed to be like a shorthand thing. You can read and pick up and read each small chapter and, and get us uh, get a bite of information that can probably help you, hopefully help you. And uh, then you could go and learn more about I already pre-ordered on myself. Oh, well, thank you. Well, you said you pre-ordered. Here's the, here's the uh, first printing of the cover jacket. So uh, there's still another one to go, but it's going to the press uh, any day now. We're putting the final uh, periods down and, and, and commas and, uh, and all the details, but it'll be here in just uh, in 12 weeks. So I'm very, very excited. So congratulations for, for, for this thank you so much. New, uh, new project. Just give it, you know, we are together with, uh, you know, uh, many of our users. I think last year it was about, you know, 60,000 people connected and, uh, um, around the world. Um, That's impressive. Users That's of a lot of design. That's great. Katia and so on. Give us, give us one reason, just one, to, 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 to buy this book. The reason to buy it is a, it's a mentor in a box. And whether you are a high school student, a college student, or you're even a CEO or board member, or possibly even a mentor, 
there is something in it for anyone trying to build anything. So it's not just about building things with either atoms or bits or both, but it's also about processes. It's, it's these things. So if you want to learn about, you know, how um, the, you know, something like an iPhone or an iPod or Nest, it, Nest products were put together, you learn about that. But if you really want to learn about teams and what it means, you know, to build teams, high performing teams, you should take that, take a look at it too. There's, I think, something in it for everyone. Uh, even if you're just curious about Apple or Nest or any of those things, there'll be a lot of tidbits in there. It's high, mm. it's very highly packed with all kinds of um, rules of thumb, rules of the road that I've learned from, you know, Steve Jobs to, you know, mentors at General Magic to these kinds of things. So um, I think it'll be a valuable read and it's a fun read. It's really raw. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't hold back. I'm, I'm a person who's very direct. You're not going to hear all kinds of pro professorial language. I know, I know. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, uh, so there's some real, I hope it's really interesting for people, but obviously that's for the audience to judge. But uh, yeah. I put my, put my heart and soul in it. It was a labor of love. I did it with a, an incredible co-writer who I've known for 10 years, uh, Dina Levinsky. And um, uh, we've gotten really good early reviews. So. I hope yeah, you guys can go out right and, and, and appreciate it. Behind all those innovations and uh, all the stories you, you shared, there are people behind. You know, it, what we are saying at the system is uh, the only progress is human. And uh, it's maybe the, the, the conclusion of this uh, of the discussion. We could spend hours, you know, discussing with you. To, to, with such uh, an amazing, uh, uh, inspiring uh, partner uh, with us. But the time is running fast. and. Uh, we are, we are at the end of the session. So again, uh, thank you very much for your time, Tony. Uh, I appreciate, and I think uh, all our uh, audience has appreciated your, uh, your uh, testimonies, your feedbacks, your, uh, your view and your perspective on, uh, on the future of, uh, of, uh, of the humanity in a way and the uh, future of products. Frederick, thank, thank you, you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And I just want to leave one last, uh, one last thing in everyone's brain. You know, with this climate stuff, we all live here and you're either working on it and you're part of the solution to solve the climate change problems and the climate crisis we have, or you're part of the problem. It's not someone else's to fix, especially for this audience. You're all creators, you're all designers, you're all builders. It's for us to rebuild the world in the right way for our kids and grandkids. So thanks very much again, the entire audience, and thanks for listening. And uh, um, I appreciate the time. We are all part of the solution. This is a very nice conclusion. Thank you again, Tony. Thank, Thank you, you everyone for following. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Enjoy Phoenix Answer World 2022.